Faisal at the University, Mustafa Sheikh, uh, is the lecturer in Islamic studies uh, here at the uh, Arabic, Islamic and Middle Eastern uh, Studies Department. Dr. Sheikh is the author of the Ottoman Puritan and its Discontents, Ahmad al-Rumi, al-Ashbisari and the Kaz Kazi Zadilis. So Dr. Sheikh is also the co-director of the Iqbal Center uh, for the study of contemporary Islam. Um, so, without further ado, I'll hand you over uh, to Welcome to all of you. One of the biggest challenges I've found teaching Islamic studies, and this is true of my experience here at Leeds, but also um, in my experience uh, teaching for a short period at Aston Business School and the theology department at Bangor, is how to engage the wide range of students and as a corollary, the wide range of interests that my courses attract. I teach Islamic law and Islamic thought. Oh, sorry, I should say uh, modern Islamic thought. <clears throat> While the overwhelming number of students on our BA Islamic Studies program would describe their religion as Islam, the actual demographic of a typical module is far more diverse. This is since students can take my courses as an elective without any prior knowledge of the subject. At one end of the student spectrum, my courses have to engage the trained alim, who is typically a madrasa graduate, has memorized the whole of the Quran, a specialist in Hadith science, fluent in Arabic, and competent reader of classical Arab and Islamic thought. And at the other end, the complete beginner. I'm not looking at you, Georgina. <laughs> The complete beginner who may at most have heard about Islam via the media and perhaps never personally come into contact with Muslims. Between these two ends of the spectrum is, a, is every hue of student. There are complexities involved in negotiating the teaching in such a setting. These include the issue of keeping everyone interested, engaged and on a trajectory of learning. There are issues of trust, authority, credibility. Then there is the issue of creating a safe space for learning, teaching and scholarly inquiry. As a member of the academy, my responsibility of maintaining academic excellence lurks ever present over me. So that's an additional pressure. The standards of excellence against which my teaching and research are evaluated are set by my peers, those in my discipline and outside of it, and a wider global community of scholars and academics. Now, any number of theological, philosophical, jurisprudential, and sociological questions arise when studying the Muslim intellectual heritage, a tradition which is made up of ancient texts in fiqh, tafsir, ilm al-hadith, falsafa. Not to engage these questions would be negligence on our part as academics. It would be a lost opportunity, for they provide the fertile ground on which to nurture intellectual inquiry analytical thought, penetrative, original, and creative problem solving. I can understand the hesitation of some teachers in addressing these questions. I think it's often well-founded and may have as much to do with preserving a, space for space, a safe space for learning as they are from fear of upsetting orthodox sensibilities. I mean, why would somebody discuss in any detail, for example, the problem of slavery in Islamic thought and all of the issues that that would throw up. For me, these questions are the very means to create a safe space, not just the purpose for which safe space is required. Because these issues, these discussions, they set the tone in my classes. They create the right ambience. They engage all, both the, both the advanced learner, the alim, and also the interested outsider. To all my students, I make clear that a critical exploration of the tradition is not spawned from a lack of deference for orthodoxy, but is rather the very task of the scholar in the academic setting. It is what we are here for. Importantly, new vistas of understanding can be opened up by exploring the tradition through the varying lenses of the humanities and the social sciences, new possibilities new pathways in the study of Islam, which are vital for developing new avenues of research, but also a duty we have 
towards communities outside the walls of the <coughs> university. Whether we are tackling sensitive issues such as slavery, forced marriage or terrorism, or thinking about what it is that makes an act or a thing or a transaction halal or haram, I've found that my students soon realize just how unique and rewarding the study of Islam, Islamic hate thought, and Muslim uh, communities and societies can be. There is much a teacher of Islam has to do to ensure the learning environment re remains a safe space, to ensure non-Muslim students have the confidence to contribute their analysis on all issues being discussed and debated. Beyond simply offering their own informed opinions, which of course have intrinsic value, I emphasize that non-Muslims in the class, of their contributions as critical outsiders are extremely valuable, especially when we're engaged in a problem-solving activity. I have to ensure that the trained Imam and Alim, who may never have experienced what it is like to engage in open and critical discussions of religious texts when they were studying or students at the madrasa, I have to ensure that he or she has the confidence to contribute as well. If I'm successful, I will have facilitated the, the creation of a convivial environment for debate, discussion and analysis. I will have created the space in which students and teacher alike are participants in the production of knowledge, made possible by the fact that many of the topics of inquiry are linked directly to my own research projects. Rarely is a teaching year the duplication of the last, and rarely do participants, including myself as teacher, come away without being in some way intellectually reorientated. Thanks very much for listening.